So this is a slightly different video to the ones that I usually produce, um, simply because I want to try something and I want to keep something going. In 2022, I have a few resolutions that I like to keep up with, some of which I've talked about in a previous video. You can go and look that up. Um, but one of my biggest kind of targets for the year is to do more reading. This might not seem like such a big deal, and in some ways it isn't, but I just want to tell you uh, a little bit of a personal story, and hopefully uh, there are some people out there who can identify with it. So as a kid, I, I didn't really read a lot of, uh, of books, let's say. Um, I couldn't really read properly until I was like maybe eight or nine. And the first book I remember reading was Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone uh, when I was about 11, 12, something like that. Uh, so didn't really have too much of an interest in reading. As I got into my teens, I, I continued reading stuff, obviously, for school. But I went to um, a, a school for people with special needs. Uh, which I will explain a little bit later. So I went to this school and I started reading a little bit more. And then eventually, I don't know, like stories were okay. Fiction was okay. Like I'd read books quite quickly and I would enjoy it. But it wasn't until I received for, was it either Christmas or my birthday one year, Rags to Ritchie by Shane Ritchie. It's the autobiography. He was massive in the early to mid 2000s and they knew I was a fan of him, the person who bought it for me. And so um, I got this, this book and I read it from cover to cover in something like two weeks, which at that point was the fastest I've ever read a book. I then felt like I have found my niche. Um, a, a kind of book that I'm interested in. Um, however, I didn't suddenly become a bookworm. Uh, I went to college after leaving school and did a BTEC course, which is a little bit more physical, you know, a bit more about the practical side of things rather than academic. I did like look in books for information, but it, it wasn't, I, I wasn't reading for pleasure. And I didn't really enjoy that. Uh, so I enjoyed the course, obviously. I went on to do um, uh, a, a course in media production and media studies at the University of Chichester, which now for various reasons, personal and otherwise, was a misstep. Um, it, it was a mistake. I enjoyed some of my time there. Uh, but the subject matter perhaps wasn't entirely what I should have been doing um, based on what I did afterwards. But, you know, we have to make these mistakes in order to learn and grow. I think the thing about university is you are like reading is part of it. <laughs> You know, uh, it's part of it. So if you're like me, if you're coming from uh, a time where you don't really read books and you haven't really got much of an interest and you find it hard to read sometimes. And I remember there was a there was a moment at school where they made like a little um, like see through thing to be able to distinguish, because sometimes for me, uh, the words would jump about the page. And funnily enough, I was diagnosed with dyslexia um, at university. So when it's a big part of it, when you have to be an academic, um, it, it suddenly is quite a jolt when you're used to doing a lot more practical things. You're used to being out in the field and having ideas and, and just making stuff rather than sitting in a library for hours on end uh, reading stuff up. I think it's fair to say I did not anticipate just how heavy on that it would be. Um, which I know is a bit naive, but coming from a special needs school and uh, and all the stuff that goes with it, I think I was naive and perhaps I should have taken a year or two to figure that out. But still, I, I will explain a little bit more in a minute. I will. Uh, so I left university and the thing about university, as I say, is that you're basically pounding the book um, and 
you are looking for information to put in essays in order to pass the course. By the end, that's literally the way that I was working. I just wanted to pass the course because although it wasn't uh, entirely um, relevant to me, this course, although I, I wasn't really getting much out of it, I guess, by the end, I just wanted to get a degree under my belt and move on. So, yeah, uh, again, not reading for pleasure. So I leave university and I have a little bit of a of a thing and, and a little bit of a fear of books, I guess, because I've been pounding them for the wrong reasons. And so then um, I'm diagnosed with autism, which again puts the whole the whole journey from college to university to now into a perspective right and this was 10 years ago i was diagnosed with autism about maybe six months to a year after leaving university and that was hard because it's like rediscovering yourself you know um and what you can and can't do and so for about a year after that i read a few things but Really, I started indulging in my actual passion. I'd been studying media production, which uh, to the University of Chichester at that moment in time was filmmaking and screenwriting and, and all that type of thing. I wanted to work in radio. I wanted to do audio production. I had studied bits of audio at the University of Chichester, but not really the areas I was interested in. So I, to use this phrase again, pounded that pavement. Um to try and, and get as much experience in producing that predominantly from home because I had my, my limits. I was doing other little odd jobs and things and, and failing at that. Um, but I, I was trying to get into that. So reading didn't really prove a part of any routine. And so after that, I started getting into audio books um, mainly of radio shows. And then the odd thing I was interested in, like animation, I'd listen to an audio book. And I guess that eased me in. And even now, if I haven't been reading for a while, a good audio book is the, is the way to go, uh, to try and ease yourself back into the language. Um, but again, we shall get to that, uh, a little bit later. So I, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, after that, and I apologize for the repetition in language, but uh, going through all those things in, in my life, um, all, all of the, you know, trying to get a job, trying to uh, get more experience in what I was actually interested in on the side, because those two at that moment in time didn't meet. Um, I just didn't read anything. And then about maybe a couple of, maybe about a year later, I read another autobiography, I think it was Scott Mill's autobiography uh, called Love You Buy, which I really enjoyed because, again, I was trying to get into the radio industry. Reading about people's stories uh, was really interesting to me. And then a couple of years later, um, I get really busy with um, running a radio station. I'm trying to do everything from the ground up because – uh, my autism is kind of stopping me from getting into employment because people have certain uh, a certain stigma attached to it. And nothing was adding up. Almost everything cancelled it all out and I wasn't getting anything. So I started a radio station and I'm sure I shall talk about that at another point. But it didn't really leave a lot of time for reading. So, so in, in uh, December of 2016... My uh, girlfriend, now wife, bought me uh, Jack Benny, Sunday nights at seven. I'd been interested in Jack Benny and old time radio for maybe two or three years, uh, which really fueled my proper passion for actually listening to radio and being interested in the history of American and British radio. So I read that from cover to cover. Absolutely loved it. I did the same thing with a few other books as well on a similar subject. But what I noticed was, I remember I, I got um, I got a couple of more academic books on Benny that I found really hard going. And I know that they're hard going anyway, but for me, 
I guess I almost developed a fear of books. Um, not necessarily like the written word, because we read it off our screens and everything, but actual books. Sitting down with a book and reading, uh, it got quite daunting, I guess, in a way. And it would make me think bad things. And I, I believe I've also got a form of OCD as well, which kind of ties into the the, the autism, the Asperger's uh, side of things. And so, yeah, <laughs> I, I found it difficult to read. I was almost like afraid to read because I'd be reading stuff and nothing would be going in because I'd just be thinking of all those hours of of being in the library, just looking at books and and almost feeling like a failure because looking in all those books didn't actually lead me anywhere. And uh, this was like seven or eight years after leaving university. And the, the thing was, I'd found the kind of book I enjoyed. I'd found the subject I liked reading about, but actually sitting down and being patient and finding the time to do it uh, was another matter entirely. And this is where the understanding my autism and Asperger's comes in. Now, I know in the past I've, I've talked about my Asperger's diagnosis. I've talked about how it affects me, but in this case, uh, in the, these days, I don't really mention it too much because there is still that stigma out there. And I don't like to, it's not that I don't identify as being on the autistic spectrum, just that sometimes it can hold me back. Suddenly, uh, in my experience, people start cancelling things when they find out people treat you slightly differently. And the thing is, when I do work, when I do stuff uh, in podcasting form or on here, I like to, in the main part, be acknowledged as just somebody who is good or OK at what they do. Uh, not, oh, it's that autistic guy uh, that he's really good, isn't he? right? Because he's autistic, because it's like that. So I, I try not to, to do that because the world isn't quite ready for that amount of, <laughs> that amount of honesty, I guess. But quietly, um, since becoming a father and, and, um, being involved in that and obviously the whole COVID thing has helped me to work on certain things because the fear of books I'm talking about happened at a time when, a, a, some days I couldn't even go outside. I'd, I'd been diagnosed with depression. I was on medication, which I stopped after about a year or so because I felt it wasn't working. And after that, I, I worked on ways. And I guess the pandemic, as I say, and being a father has helped me to work on that and develop uh, patience, which is such an important thing. If you develop uh, a form of patience where you don't mind waiting for something like you you're just you're just free and easy with it suddenly the whole world seems to open up to you you know um and this is where uh, the reading thing comes in uh so because i've developed that that kind of patience and uh, an understanding of certain things and i'm not rushing about trying to do a million things and i'm i'm remaining more focused which the pandemic did a lot to help, didn't it? Um, I'm starting to read again, read a lot more books uh, and actually take in what they're saying and not worry about the speed, not deviate off into other centers to actually just focus. And really, yeah, the focus is the most important thing, um, being able to do that and, and getting something out of it. So what is the purpose of this video other than me telling you a story uh, that you might not be interested in? Well, um, one of my New Year's resolutions is to read more. And I want to spread that uh, all over the place, basically. I want to encourage other people to read because there are a lot of things in written form um, for my niche that I'm things I'm really interested in that are written down that I'm missing out on. And I want to now get to grips with that and do more of it. And I want to encourage other people to do the same. So maybe once a month, I will sit here and I'll tell you what I'm reading and uh, 
you know, how that makes me feel and perhaps some of the stuff I'm learning from that. And in return, you guys tell me what you're reading um, and we can have a little conversation in the comments uh, in future videos and hopefully we can kind of encourage some positivity because reading has kind of fallen by the wayside for a lot of people. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who took it up in, in lockdown because suddenly they had all the hours in the day. Now, I know there will be some going, Jamie, I want to take part, but I have no interest in Charles Dickens or Jane Austen or any of those works. Well, the thing is, this isn't about whether I can get through A Tale of Two Cities in a month. This is not what that's about. To me, it's just about reading the written word on a subject that you're interested in. So whether you're interested in fiction, non-fiction, historical, modern, erotic fiction, whatever, you know, just, just sit down, relax, and take in the beauty of the written word. That's all I'm encouraging here. So... What am I reading at the moment? Well, I started slightly out of my comfort zone because for my birthday, I got two books on Jack Benny, which lovely, can't wait to read those. And I was bought this book by Sally Morgan, uh, also known as Psychic Sally. This is Secret Spirit. I'm about halfway through this and I don't normally read books of this kind, um, but I have mild interest in the spirit realm. And so um, the person who bought it for me thought, well, you know, we've been talking about this. Why don't we uh, read a book together almost? Because um, that, that's the other thing. It can be a group activity. She's got a copy as well. Why don't we read a book together and, uh, and have a chat about it afterwards? And it's still an autobiography. Uh, it's still mainly the story of somebody's life. So it's not completely a million miles away. Uh, I'm also reading uh, a book on Fred Allen called Much Ado About Me and a book by Adam Nadef called The Life and Wife of Alan Ludden. And I'm reading it on a Kindle. And, and this is the thing, right? You might be wondering, what are the rules for for this? You know, I can't afford books. Well... If you don't have books, you can always get them on an e-reader like this, an Amazon Kindle. Uh, you can also maybe read them like they're on Google Books and stuff, aren't they? Uh, little bits from that. That counts. Or even if um, you've got some kind of impairment or you find it easier to listen to audio books, that counts as well. And it's not about how many books you're consuming it's whether you're enjoying doing it. And that's what I want to spread in 2022. Let me know what you're reading uh, right now as you're watching this video uh, at this time. And I will see you again for another of these book club style videos.